Welcome traders to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we get going, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limiteds. Those of you here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, uh, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, uh, day gambling. And uh, as, uh, as the market uh, move started to change, I eventually began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my capital. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on uh, financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you accept and understand the true nature of trading uh, being a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster. I'm living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcomes of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private tra traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tikno clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily uh, technical trade setup videos for markets that I'm actively tracking, and I share those through the Tickmill blog and through the Tickmill TradingView accounts. I also run Tickmill's E-mini Strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily trade plan outlining my pre-market thoughts for the cash trading session ahead for the S&P 500, giving my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the markets. These pre-market plans have delivered just under 6,000 points of profit now since we launched the group in April 2021. Second Ticknell strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Ticknell Futures uh, Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the cash session in New York, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and those mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. We will jump into the charts. Um, before I get going here, as always, I would, if you have any questions, just drop those into the chat. 
and I will come back to them at the end of the presentation. Equally, if you'd like, uh, if you'd like me to give a view on an instrument that I don't cover in my presentation, then again, you can put that into the chat, and I'll uh, I'll give you a view on that at the end of uh, my presentation. So let's get going here with the SP five hundred, the E Mini futures contract. Um, again, coming into this week, I wanted to be positioned on the long side. Uh, we had key support tested at the 3940s that we talked about last week. Uh, that held. Yesterday, we got this upside extension after Fed Chair Powell was viewed to be less hawkish than anticipated, uh, walking back or potentially walking back the rate of rate increases. Now, he, did, he certainly didn't suggest that there was going to be any pause imminently. Um, there would obviously be that would be uh, down the road in terms of an actual pause in rate hikes, but he did suggest uh, that uh, there could be a slowing in terms of the rate increases, and the markets took that as a dovish move. And so we extended to the upside, and we tested into the uh, 4100 level. I'm looking for this 4100 to break today, and my target for the move is this 4120 to 4130 area. Now, talked about this as well last week, that is going to take us into this trend channel resistance on the weekly time frame here, and that is going to be a pivotal test for the markets. We will also be completing a uh, symmetry, uh, sorry, an equality objective. So when I talk about equality, for those of you who are here for the first time, I will draw one in, I won't draw them all. But essentially what I'm tracking is these equal legs for Elliott waivers. It's that ABC pattern. And you can see, so that gives us the target there, 4127. So I'm anticipating we test that area today, and that is going to be a key test for markets. Uh, from a sentiment perspective, obviously, we, we saw that big surge yesterday, a washout of short positions. Now, to my mind, it could be a question of the market now getting overly enthusiastic at poor trade locations. So as we test this resistance, I'm going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns as a potential to engage on the short side. Now, if we blow through these levels, this 41, uh, 4120, 4130, then I'm gonna be thinking of the next upside objectives. And my next targets, if we don't get any reaction at these key levels, is going to be 4150 to 4170. My support for today will be these prior highs into the 4050. So any pullbacks into 4050, you want to watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, targeting 4120, 4130. We get through there without any bearish reversal patterns. Do note, though, at this stage, we do have developing momentum divergence. Now, momentum divergence is a confirmation I use to play uh, counter trend trades at the moment. Obviously, the short term or the, the for our perspective is to the long side. So we would consider any trade on the short side, a counter trend trade on that specific time frame. But if we can maintain the momentum divergence here, then that will give me additional confirmation to engage on the counter trend side of the trade. So that's the, uh, the setup that I'm tracking today in the S&P 500, E-mini S&Ps. Let's move to the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, again, similar setup to the uh, S&P. What we're looking for is any pullbacks into the 11,940 area, bullish reversal patterns there, engage on the long side. Let me just zoom this chart out so you can see the trend channel that I'm tracking here. So we are looking for a test of weekly projected range resistance, daily projected range resistance, and this trend line resistance, trend channel resistance coming in 12,230s. Similar to that S&P setup, if we get into that area and we maintain momentum divergence, i.e. prices making new highs, but we don't get a new high, uh, versus the last high in terms of the momentum study here, then we're going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And from that area, the first target on the downside will be back into this support area, 11,900. If we get through there, then we have trend line support coming in, 11,730. Moving to the Dow Jones. So we are looking for a test now. This is the five equals one objective. So if we're going to this reference, this pullback as our wave for low. We have a five equals one, which will take us into weekly and daily projected range resistance, just below 35,000. Same setup. We get bearish reversal patterns there. I'm going to be looking to engage on the short side, targeting a move initially down into trend channels, trend line support, 34,000. We have the high volume node there, 33,700. 
So you can see with these equity indexes specifically, we're coming into some pretty key inflection points. Now, like I say, if we can get through these levels on a daily closing basis, then we could really be starting to think about uh, an acceleration potentially to the upside as shorts really do cover into the year end and we get that seasonal effect, uh, the year end Santa rally, et cetera. But for now, I'm paying really close attention to how these markets respond at these key inflection points, certainly with these, uh, these US equity indexes. Russell, similar scenario here. Russell can actually get up to test uh, range resistance and we are looking for a move into uh, just below or uh, just above the 2000 level having a uh, quality objective 1990 so any move into that area for the Russell again similar scenario we're looking for uh, momentum divergence and bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side and certainly we'd be thinking about a move back down into the 1910 level in terms of the Russell Moving to the Euro area and the DAX. DAX held that trend channel support and we are extending. So I'm looking now for the, for the DAX to extend into its five equals one objective. So uh, we are looking for a test of just above the 15,000 level. So any close through 14,600 on the, on the four hour time frame, the confirmation to engage on the long side looking for a move up into that target zone and from there again i'm going to be watching for momentum divergence to develop and certainly we can be thinking about a pullback into trend channel support here at the uh these prior highs again 50 uh, 14,500 would be the first target for a correction on the downside the nifty this was the this was really the canary in the coal mine. This was the one that led us uh, has led the global markets higher uh, as it uh, as it made new equity highs. We highlighted this uh, this pullback area and the extension. So we've extended now into the one six one extension here, uh, uh, eighteen thousand nine hundred sixty. So once again with the Nifty, um, we do have we don't have any momentum divergence yet. So what I would how I use the momentum study to give me a better sense of where we are in terms of the cycle, that any near-term high that we get is likely now to be a wave three high because we don't have that momentum divergence. So what I'll be looking for then will be pullbacks into the trend channel support uh, to engage on the long side, looking for that five equals one extension once we can identify that wave four low in place. And for now, we'd be looking at any pullbacks into the 18,600 area, bullish reversal patterns, and we will be looking for that fifth wave extension to develop. TLT bonds hit our target last week. We have pulled back into the pitchfork support here, and uh, and we're looking for a reversal. So, what I again, the target for me at this stage now is this 106.50 area. Let's uh, let's show you actually the target is going to be adjusted. Um, let's do this. So we're looking for a five equals one from our potential way for low. So that would actually give us a target now in terms of TLT at the 107.40. So any close through 103.80s on a closing basis for our time frame, we look to engage on the long side and our target is 107.20s, which would uh, complete the initial move here. So what, th this target that we've got will give us an interim upside objective and again, if we make if we hit this target and we don't have momentum divergence at the moment, it is developing, then we could consider this to be a wave three high, and then we'll be looking for a wave four pullback. But for now, we're going to use this as a potential wave four low, and we're going to target 107.20s. Dollar index continue to hold trend channel resistance breaking down. So any pullbacks now that hold this 106.20 to 106.50, we are looking for our target test into the 104 handle. Now from there, I'm anticipating as long as we get this momentum divergence intact, I'll be looking for a, a tradable pullback in terms of the dollar index. And certainly we can think about moving back into the uh, wave four high here, which would give us put us back into the 107.70s. Uh, so we're going to be seeing now if the dollar can actually trade into that target zone, complete this initial cycle um, from the swing high here at the 113 level, and then we'll be looking to trade the correction before potentially starting another leg 
to the downside in terms of the dollar index. It's interesting, like I said last week, the, uh, the synchronicity with the dollar potentially going to test into that 104 as the S&P tests into that 4120, uh, 4130. These are key tests now for these markets. And if they all reverse in synchronicity, that's going to add fuel to, uh, to these trade setups that I've been talking about. Euro dollar, similar scenario. We're looking for that 106 test. And we're going to be looking for momentum divergence to be maintained. That 106 coincides with the weekly trend line resistance as well. And uh, again, we're going to pay close attention to how price responds at these key inflection levels, because certainly we can start to think about a tradable pullback in terms of the, uh, the dollar and the euro dollar. Similar scenario in terms of cable. Getting close to our target level, 122.18 is what we're looking for here. We've got momentum divergence, so we're going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns as we test into this area to engage on the short side. Initial target, we'll be back into trend channel support, interim trend channel support here, 120.40. So we'll see if we get, uh, get a response here in terms of cable. If we break, if we don't <coughs> get a rejection here, next upside objective is going to be 123.60s. For, uh, for sterling, but initially we're looking for that 122.18 test. Dollar yen <coughs> traded to target last night, so we're looking at a new pattern now. What I'm looking for here is any pullbacks into this prior support, now to act as resistance, 137.60s. Again, we're looking for bearish reversal patterns from that area to engage on the short side, and I'm targeting a move down now into the uh, S3 there, 133.20s, will be the next downside objective. Technically, we have completed an initial five wave sequence on the daily time frame here. So we could see a pull, a more significant pullback. But for now, we want to trade with the trend. And so any move back into that 137.60s, we want to watch the bearish reversal patterns and engage on the short side. At this stage, we really need to close back through this interim uh, trend channel resistance, high volume nodes, 139.40s, 140 area to suggest a more meaningful corrective move is likely to play out. And that would give us a retest of the wave four high into that 142.30, 142.50 level. Euro yen has an interesting setup that's developing here. <clears throat> Let me just zoom out and you can see. So what we're tracking here is a, a, what Elliott Wavers referred to as a WXY pattern. W, this is our X, <coughs> X wave low. And we're looking for a Y uh, from, sorry, from our X wave high here at 146.14. We have the equality objective, 140.29. We have some trend channel support coming in. So I'm looking for any move into this area, watch for bullish reversal patterns here to engage on the long side. First call to call will be the midpoint of the channel, 142.80s. If we can get through there, we look for the high volume node and trend channel resistance up towards 145. Similar scenario developing in terms of sterling dollar, uh, sorry, sterling yen. As we hold trend channel resistance here, internal trend channel resistance, once just... 166.80s, 167.00. Watch for bearish reversal patterns there. I'm looking for a move down to break through the support here, 163.07, into our WXY objective, which is 159.80s, also coincides with 50% retracement of the move from the lows. And we have this, uh, this price swing low here also coming in 159.80s. So some juicy targets to trade for on the downside here if we get the rejection into the uh, projected trend channel resistance. Dollar CAD. <clears throat> target level now. New target for uh, the dollar CAD here is going to be 130.20s. We are looking now for a confirmation breakthrough. This trend line support here, 133.80s to engage on the short side, and we're targeting to move down into projected trend channel support, 130.33 for the dollar CAD. Aussie, getting close to our target level here, we are looking for a move into the 68.90s as uh, to complete this initial uh, upside objective, and pullbacks then remain supportive, We've actually, we'll have a new target then up into the uh, the 70 level. Let me draw in what we will be looking for here. So we will look for pullbacks from our target zone. 
into the prior highs to act as support, trend channel support coming in there. Uh, 67.60s, we'll be looking to engage on the long side, targeting move up to the 70 level uh, once, we, uh, once we tag this initial target zone here at the 68.90s. Kiwi dollar traded to our 63 target, and we are looking now for any pullbacks into the 62.80s to engage on the long side, targeting move up now to test the 6430s as the next technical upside objective in terms of the Kiwi dollar. Gold, I'm looking for gold now to test 1811. From there, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns. So think about it, as gold is testing this uh, just above the 1800 level, that dollar index should be testing that 104, which have the S&P testing up into that 4120, 4130. For all these line up and we get a bearish reversal pattern here in terms of the uh, in terms of gold i'll be looking for a pullback into the 1730 the midpoint of the channel before we start the next leg to the upside uh, so what i'm anticipating initially how i approach these setups is that i'm looking for a correct i'm looking to trade a correction now the correction can develop into an impulse leg and then we have a new trend to trade but for now we're thinking about these in terms of corrective moves off uh, of some of these key levels silver any move up into the 2280s, watch for bearish reversal patterns there as long as we get some momentum divergence in play to engage on the short side. First target to the downside is going to be 2140s in terms of silver. Crude oil, trading just shy of our five equals one objectives in a nice strong uh, bounce there in terms of crude. So what I'm looking for now is crude to trade up into the prior wave for high here. Uh, 8240s, we then look for a, let me draw that in actually, make it a bit clearer for you guys. So we look for an extension here up into that 8230, 8250 level. From there, we're looking for a three wave corrective move to ideally get us back into this 7750 before looking for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side. And then we'll be targeting a move up into the high volume node there, 8813. And that well, we'll come just potentially just shy. Again, what I'm looking for is an equality objective here. So 86.50s would be the initial target. And then we would have that uh, extra magnet of the high volume node at the 88.13. So watch for bearish reversal patterns here as the way four, three way corrective move, ideally back into this uh, high volume node, 78.60s, 77.70s before looking for the next leg to the upside in terms of crude. Bitcoin, still just trapped in this range. Uh, we were looking for support to hold just above the 16,000 level. It did, traded into that first target zone. I was looking for 17,100 for those who follow my daily outlook. I'm now looking for uh, this 16,600, 16,500 to act as support. And ultimately, then we look for a test up into the trend channel resistance just below 18,000 in terms of Bitcoin. Actually, let me just update this channel here. I'm going to use that and that. So, yeah, we look for a move here into the 17,300. Then we're looking to use this midpoint of the channel as support for targeting a test of the uh, trend channel resistance to the upside just below 18,000. We'll finish up here looking at uh, the Kiwi, uh, sorry, the Swissy. Swiss is still trading technically uh, versus the 9380s. We could get an equality test up into the 9620s before ultimately we are looking for a test of 9140s as the downside objective in the Swiss. So any close through that uh, 9350s would be a confirmation on the short side, targeting move down to 9150s as the next downside objective. That concludes the whistle stop tour of the markets I'm tracking this week. We are, like I say, we are about to test some pretty key levels. Um, for those who want to follow along with respect to uh, my analysis on a daily uh, basis, I will post into the chat. This is the idea stream for uh, the tick mill uh, trading account. And you can see my uh, my trade analysis <clears throat> on a daily basis there. Post those videos updating uh, these key charts. And like I say, we are about to test some pretty key levels here, uh, which could define certainly the next week or two in terms of uh, in terms of price action. And for those who want to get the daily trade plan 
uh, that I share in the uh, Facebook group. You just request access here and uh, you'll get access to the daily trade plan along with some other interesting institutional insights I post uh, into that, uh, that group. So for me today, guys, really the focus is going to be on this S&P and the test of this 4120 4130, and we'll see if any sellers are at home. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.